So here it is, one video showing you all the steps and all the modifications I had to go through to convert this throttle body injection unit into a throttle body. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. Spring has sprung here in the frozen north and I'm soon going to be able to open the garage door fire up the engine on the engine run stand, and do some test in tune with my Frankenstein fuel injection setup. That'll be on a 351, not my 393, just to make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. In the long run, it is destined for the 393. As I've started the planning process to fire that motor up, I had a few little things that needed to be done to these throttle bodies to fully get them exactly the way they needed to be. And I realized that the last three or four videos have all been about these aluminum mid plates and there's not been any detail other than the initial disassembly of a throttle body injector on how I got these to the state that they're in now. So that's what we're going to go over in this video. I'm going to show the entire process that I went through to convert this into this. Now, the initial disassembly of a throttle body unit like this is actually part of my first Frankenstein EFI video where I'm really going into this project. Rather than making you go back and watch that video, well, you really should, it's a good video, but rather than making you go back and watch that video, I'm going to put an abridged version of the teardown of this in this video. Now, if you've seen that video and you don't want to watch me take this apart, skip ahead to the time index that I'm going to put right about there. So let's take a quick look at everything that has gone into converting a throttle body injector into a pair of throttle bodies. All right, so the first thing that needs to happen is we need to strip this down. We can start by pulling hoses off. When I removed this from the truck that it was on, I didn't need any of these lines, so I just cut stuff. All right, with that out, now we'll go to the idle air control valve. Now I already loosened this. Set that off to the side. We have the fuel inlet and the fuel return line. That's got to come off because this whole entire piece here needs to come out. And we can't remove it with these pieces attached. Now let's see about getting these fuel injectors off. And just like that, the fuel injector assembly comes completely off. See if I can get this off without breaking it so that I can use that as a pattern for the replacement piece of aluminum that's going to fit over that hole. All right. If we pull the throttle position sensor off of this end... You can see we have that nice blade there, and this is the key to be able to attach this side of one throttle body to the throttle linkage side of the next throttle body. Now the question then becomes, if we're attaching this end right here, how do you attach it to this end right here? Well, all this junk has to be removed on the throttle body that is not actually going to have the throttle linkage. So the way this is made is the shaft is machined and then it's ground into a double D and then a double D slot is cut in this piece of steel. It is then slid onto the shaft and peened out to hold it in place. All a person has to do is get in there with a cutoff wheel or die grinder and grind this nub smooth and then you can pop this throttle linkage off. This is one that I've already done. This is where it was up against the shaft and you can see right there the marks where I had to grind it flat to get that off. 
It is a little bit of a press fit, so once you grind that, you do have to get under there with a screwdriver to get it to pop off. So other than removing that and doing quite a bit of cleaning, getting some grime and, and grit out of this, that's all we had to do to set this up as a throttle body. Here is my two throttle body injectors that have now been converted into just throttle bodies. We still have the throttle position sensor on this side. We still have the throttle linkage on this side. And now we need to couple those. So attaching to that is fairly simple. All we have to do is cut a groove into a connector, but you really have to index this end. You want there to be some adjustability so that the butterflies open together and properly. So what's my solution? How do I get adjustability on this side and still have it mate to that? Well, my solution is this right here. You can kind of see there is that notch inside. That goes on this end right here. And then on the other side, we just have an open hole with four set screws. So to use this, we're just gonna take and install it. Now what's nice about this, even after I cut it off, there is a flat spot right there. And if you look really close, you can actually see a mark where I had my set screws tightened down. So once all four set screws are tightened, I am not worried about this at all slipping. So we go ahead and we slide that all the way on. Then once everything is in place, we can go ahead and slide these two together. With those two now coupled, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down these set screws. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why is he only using set screws on one side? I wanted to have a little bit of movement and adjustment so that when this gets tightened down, there's no binding. And so having it free floating on this end, even though it's as far as the actual throttle movement, it's tight, having just a little bit of play allows me some freedom and a little room for error when these get tightened down onto the intake. After I had it fully disassembled, it was a quick bath in the ultrasonic cleaner with some pine saw, but that's a totally different video. And it came out looking super shiny and ready to be reassembled. So now that we've seen the initial disassembly, let's look at a few more things that had to happen to get this to throttle body status. First, I had a couple of holes to plug, and I did that with just two pieces of aluminum. This one gets screwed into place using the screws that were originally holding down the fuel injectors, and this one is actually going to be glued in place. I'll probably use a little right stuff that should hold really well, and I shouldn't have to worry about any air leaks, that kind of thing. Second. When I modified this shaft, I had to cut the bottom off of this throttle linkage arm because it was hitting my Frankenstein EFI adapter. In order to get this shaft out, you have to remove the butterflies. And it's very important that you come in with a grinder on the original screws and you grind the little tip off. If you do not do that and you try and loosen those screws just with brute force, you will break them off, requiring you to either replace this shaft or go through the tedious process of drilling it out and re-tapping it. I'm not really set up to peen these over without damaging anything, but I also don't want these coming loose and dropping into the motor. The solution there is just a very soft Loctite, something that doesn't require heat to break loose, but is just gonna add a little bit of holding power. Basically, this will make it so that vibration will not cause it to loosen up. But if I ever want to take it apart, I have that option. Also, Chevy used these throttle body injectors in a variety of different vehicles, and they were configured differently. Now, the major configuration differences are on your vacuum ports. There's different vacuum ports that go to different spots. The good news is that doesn't really affect me because most of my vacuum ports are gonna be plugged off anyway. But the other thing that changed is the actual size of the butterflies. Now we're not talking the bore. The bore is the same on both of my housings, 
But initially, my butterflies were two different sizes. One is a five and one is a 10. Now, what difference does that make? Well, it's pretty simple. The 10 is a slightly bigger butterfly. It's longer and it creates a little more of an angle in the bore of the throttle body when it is in the closed position. The five is closer to horizontal in relation to the engine and the car. Having more of an angle just reduces your total travel on this arm. So we'll think about it in extreme. Let's say that the butterfly is so big that it's sitting in an angle like that all the time, and that's fully closed. You've only got that much total throttle travel. Having the smaller one gives you a whole lot more travel. Now we're not talking significant changes. And I think I could have probably used the five or the 10 for this application, but they need to be matched. When I initially coupled my two throttle bodies together, one was a five and one was a 10, and you could see at wide open throttle that they were not at the exact same angle. This adapter that I'm making, well, it has a nice open plenum to help share air. It's still not gonna be perfect. And the last thing I need is one throttle body providing more air than the other throttle body for the exact same level of throttle. So it was an easy fix. I removed the 210 throttle blades and installed the extra set of five throttle blades that I happen to have. Thankfully, I did have two matched sets. So that is definitely something that you need to keep in mind. The next thing, the idle air circuit on this. Now, if you remember, originally there was an electronic controlled piece right here. And what it had was a plunger that goes into this passage right here, allowing air to go in, and then it comes out here in the bottom. And when the plunger is fully depressed, we have a seal. When it's sucked back in, you now have a gap that air can flow in. I'm not using the idle air circuits that came on these because I don't wanna run two. I don't want there to be the chance that one idle air circuit on one throttle body is open more than the other. Again, I am trying to keep balance between the two throttle bodies. So my solution was to get this adapter right here. Now this is an M20 by one and a half to a three eighths pipe thread adapter. And all I'm gonna do is put a hose on this and tee it into the other one and then from there, run it to a single idle air circuit that will be adding the necessary vacuum leak to adjust idle on this unit. That creates an issue. Had I just plugged this with this, there would now be a massive hole between this opening here and this port right here. So we would have a massive vacuum leak. The solution for that was to get in there and tap that hole and just put a plug in it. I ended up going with a 7 16 set screw. There is not a lot of room down inside there to get the tap in past. And the 7 16 tap was the best option to do that. Now, thread sealant is going to be used there for two reasons. One, I don't want that to be another vacuum leak. And two, I don't want that set screw backing out. Next thing that I did, I tapped this hole in the middle also for 7 16 and it currently has a set screw in it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my lathe and drill a hole in it that is smaller than the hex size, and then I'm going to thread that hole so that now I have a riser that comes up and connects to my air cleaner. Now this is not perfectly centered in this circle, so I am gonna have to put a little bit of a jog in it but it should work really well as a tie down for the air cleaner. The other thing that I had to do, and again, this is important because not all throttle bodies are configured the same from the factory. I had to remove the plug that was right here so that I could remove the idle screw. Now it's EFI, so we're not using it to set the base idle, 
but we are using it to set a slight opening so that you're not trying to start the engine with absolutely no air flowing through. Getting this out is definitely a little bit of a pain. The first thing I had to do is grind the metal cap flat because it comes to a point. And that point makes it super hard to drill out. The drill bit wants to wander even if you use a center punch. Once I had it ground flat, I went ahead and center punched it. And then from there, I was able to drill it out. Now, I tried to get in there and grab it and pull it out and I could not get it to budge. So the easiest way for me to pull it out was actually to thread it, just run a tap down it, and then screw in a piece of all thread and give it a good tug. When you reassemble that screw, just make sure you put the spring back in. Like any other idle screw on like say a carburetor, there is always a tensioning spring to help hold it into place so there's no slop in the threads and all backlash is removed so that we have a nice adjustment that is accurate as you screw it in and screw it out. You could easily use these techniques to convert a throttle body injector into a single throttle body, depending on your EFI application, or in my case, a dual throttle body like I am using for my Frankenstein EFI. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.